The Community Enterprise Operating System, or CentOS, is a Linux distribution that is in the process of being phased out. But what does this mean for its users and telecom operators in particular? To find out, I'm talking today with Daryl Jordan-Smith, Red Hat Senior Vice President of Telco, Media, Entertainment and Edge, and Mike McGrath, the company's Vice President of Core Platforms. Uh, good to see you both. Thanks for joining us. So in 2021, Red Hat announced it would stop supporting the CentOS Linux distributions. Version 8 support stopped in December of that year, and end of life for version 7 is scheduled for June the 30th, 2024. And what drove that decision, and what are you doing for communities tied to those CentOS projects? Yeah, that was a really important decision at the time. Uh, and really it boils down to a, a big community aspect of what CentOS Linux was at that time. Uh, it was a, a community of mostly users. It was very difficult to contribute back to the community. And uh, while there were some very key people that did uh, good and interesting work there, it was very lopsided compared to some of our other communities like we saw in Fedora. And so we thought it would be best to change the model a bit to one that uh, would be more community oriented uh, and where, where we could actually interact with uh, members of the community and where we could work with partners in the open uh, to get work done. And uh, that was when we decided to focus on, on CentOS Stream. And so that's really the key, uh, that was really the key driver for, for CentOS Stream uh, at that time. And uh, as part of that, you know, we didn't uh, see much of a need to have uh, the rebuild around anymore. We had several free offerings uh, available and we we're trying to drive people to those uh, those free or otherwise low cost offerings. Okay, thanks Mike. And uh, Daryl, do you want to come in some, with some thoughts here as well? So what really drove the decision for Red Hat, I think Mike just went through in some detail. What it means for telecommunications companies is that they still get to collaborate with Red Hat in CentOS streams and they still get to innovate there and know that that ends up in the rail distribution that's widely deployed across their network. We work with them very closely in terms of driving a lot of these things into the upstream. And that is where the innovation occurs. And that's what telecommunications companies really care about, is the ability to actually develop and contribute into the upstream to build the overall product as it then comes into CentOS streams where they can actually test, deploy, uh, run all of the environments that they want to run in before then deploying it in RHEL in production across their network with the life cycle that they need uh, in order to operate their business. Okay, thanks, Daryl. Um, now, some people are saying that stopping support for CentOS goes against uh, Red Hat's open source principles. Uh, how do you respond to that? Mike, if we can come to you first. Red Hat is just as committed to open source as we've ever been. And I tried to lay that out in my second blog post. Uh, we do everything we can to push all of our code upstream first before we pull it back down into the product. And now's probably a good time to talk about the difference between a community project like CentOS or Fedora, or even the upstream Linux kernel and a Red Hat product, which is something that we package and sell. Um, a project uh, tends to be where community people from various different backgrounds and things come together. And in our case, that's uh, CentOS Stream. And you can come and watch our engineers actually put RHEL together in real time. And every six months, we batch that up and release it as RHEL after a lot of testing and other things. And Red Hat has over a thousand people working on RHEL, doing all the, all the testing you might expect from performance testing to certification, uh, making sure it integrates well with other products and our partners. And we have over 5,000 connection points with the ecosystem uh, and that ecosystem partners, and that includes hardware and software and pretty much anything an enterprise would need. Uh, that is where we work on that. Uh, Red Hat maintains very tight control around RHEL. That's the thing that we produce, uh, but we work with the community uh, and other places to negotiate future uh, features uh, and uh, what's coming next. And uh, once that has been, once those new features from upstream have been brought into RHEL, uh, we support it for a period of 10 years, uh, two years for some minor releases, and we have uh, several different lifecycle options, including for uh, telecommunications. And that lifecycle is very valuable to people, and it's not something that you can get from upstreams. Uh, that's something that uh, Red Hat provides as a, a product, and, and uh, our customers and partners have found it very useful. Okay, thanks, Mike. And uh, Daryl, do you want to add anything to this uh, perception out there as well? It 
from a Red Hat perspective, you know, we are open source. Nothing has changed in terms of anything that we do in open source. We drive all of our contributions to the upstream. Our motto internally is upstream first. We innovate there with all the communities. We drive that there. We then bring that down into a distribution that we can actually then um, deploy in an enterprise and or carry a great network uh, environment. Um, and in fact, a lot of the ecosystem, which is really important for this, depend on RHEL and our ability to innovate and engage with the larger ecosystem, as well as the hardware beneath it. And the hardware is actually particularly important in telecommunications because uh, we're seeing a lot of news around sustainability, different hardware architectures, whether they're GPUs, DPUs, IPUs, ARM, Intel, uh, Qualcomm, Marvell, the list goes on and on and on. And you've got a lot of interdependencies there. And the engineering that Red Hat actually has that we have deployed and working very closely with the uh, communication service providers is absolutely critical to the way that they move forward. And from our perspective, that combined with the life cycle, the ability to, uh, as I said earlier, for those companies to inject uh, their innovation into the upstream and then test deploy uh, into CentOS, uh, streams before they actually deploy at scale with RHEL is very important. Okay, thanks, Dal. Um, now, how would you respond to those who claim that they offer the best path forward for CentOS users? Uh, Mike? Yeah, so for, for current and former CentOS Linux users, uh, I think the best path forward for them is, is to first take a look at RHEL. There's, you can get the real deal. Um, we have, for example, a developer SKU for people that want uh, you know, 16 licenses. You can even use those in production, despite uh, what, what some people think. Um, if your environment is fairly small and contained and you just have 16 uh, systems, go take a look at the developer uh, uh, developer for individuals uh, offering. We have larger offerings as well for, uh, you know, obviously enterprise use cases and telecommunications use cases. Uh, I would say first place is to look at RHEL. It's the, it's the real deal. Um, beyond that, if you're looking at maybe developing things or doing open source work, uh, depending on what you want to do, I might take a look at Fedora if you want to build some sort of industry changing feature into an operating system. Uh, from there, Red Hat will pull it into maybe the next major RHEL release. Um, if you're just looking to integrate with RHEL, CentOS Stream is a really great option. Uh, you can come and work with the uh, actual uh, RHEL developers that are, are building RHEL. Uh, and everything that goes into CentOS Stream is destined for the next minor version uh, uh, of RHEL. And that's a really important uh, use case. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that we announced uh, this uh, last week uh, that I had in my blog post was about the concept of rebuilders, um, uh, you know, basically acting sort of like a siphon. Uh, normally, in an uh, in an open source community, when upstream does something that you're unhappy with, you would fork and then maintain that fork into something new. It's forking is an act of innovation, uh, and it's one of the very powerful parts of of open source. Uh, what we've seen instead is the, these rebuilders. Uh, they don't really want to fork, and it's because I think they they want Red Hat's you know future promise on things. Uh, but even with the code that they build, it's not real RHEL. It's missing several features that RHEL has beyond just the support. Uh, there's also several services that come with with RHEL, and that includes insights and other things. And so, you know, one of the things I think caused a lot of of confusion is I think a lot of people thought that we were actively backing or somehow supporting these rebuilds. Uh, and Red Hat just doesn't see uh, as much value as we used to in having these rebuilds around, uh, rebuilds around especially since RHEL is more available than ever. And so, uh, you know, I don't, uh, uh, you know, in, in, some, in some cases, this kind of looks like a logo swap. Maybe it, it said RHEL for pay, but now you can get something else for free. Uh, but that's not quite accurate. It's not a, a, a great description of what's going on uh, because RHEL includes so much more than just, uh, than just the bits that you would install on disk. Okay, great. And uh, Daryl, is there anything you can add here to uh, provide clarity to this situation for users? Well, a lot of the these companies out there, they in, actually they use CentOS Streams to actually build their their products. So they they're trying to actually stay very close to CentOS Streams because they know that you can create a lot of technology debt if you initially fork away from that. So from my perspective, I, I, I really do think that Red Hat is very close to its roots. It's very focused on those communities, engaging with those communities and innovating with those communities. 
And we let other companies thrive, you know, leveraging you know, CentOS streams and, uh, and provide alternatives in the marketplace. So we're open in that way as well. So from my perspective, if you're deploying a mission-critical carrier-grade network, you really do need a, a, a operating system that's going to scale and deliver uh, what you need with the life cycles, I keep saying, and the security necessary to uh, be effective and have a, a, a rock-solid mission-critical environment. Now, um, Daryl, you spend pretty much all of your time with telecom companies. Uh, how are they responding? Are there uh, additional implications for those particular users? Um, they're, they're responding by asking us questions. They're trying to get clarification of what it really means. You know, what happens to the CentOS um, that they have widely deployed in environments in their business, normally in non-mission critical environments. Uh, and the answer for us is, is you, you, this, this choice, A, in the marketplace, but also we often offer a nice way or a path forward with RHEL. And as Mike was saying, we actually have various different options there that are actually very uh, competitively positioned in the marketplace. And we would encourage anyone, as I said earlier, if you're deploying a mission critical uh, live environment where you need security, you need innovation, you need that life cycle. I think Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the way to go. Okay, thanks, Daryl. And uh, Mike, anything that you want to add for the, the telecom community? Yeah, I would just add that Red Hat has some of the top engineers in the industry, and they're focused on solving real telecommunications problems, particularly around things like performance and scaling. Uh, these are uh, situations that typically upstream and communities don't hit until it gets to a very major customer or a major vendor like Red Hat. And uh, uh, I think this is one of the key things that, especially in the telecom industry that, you're, that they need is someone to be able to rely on to help solve and find those really peculiar uh, performance issues uh, when they come up. So uh, Daryl, Mike, thanks very much for talking to us today about this topic. Uh, any parting words for service providers that are planning their way forward with CentOS? Uh, Daryl, let's start with you. Well, very good question. And, and I, I want to impart you know, a story or, or what I see on a regular basis. I'm engaged with the, many of the service providers around the globe. When we sit down with them and walk them through what we've done with RHEL, how we're continuing to invest in RHEL with that ecosystem around RHEL, how they can still participate and work with us in the upstream and actually use CentOS streams to innovate and test and run their pre-production environments before they get to production in RHEL, they understand what we're doing. And they actually are very much encouraged with what we're doing because actually at the end of the day, supports them in mission critical environments where they have a regulated environment that they need to maintain a level of security and uptime and availability uh, to sustain their network operations. Okay, and uh, Mike, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I think I'd echo what Daryl said. Uh, you know, the, the rebuilders don't actually have commit access to RHEL. And so if, uh, if somebody's using a rebuilder in a production or mission critical environment uh, and they have a bug, they pretty much have to hope that someone else, a Red Hat, an actual Red Hat customer also has that bug. Otherwise it will go unfixed. Uh, and I think the other part that I would mention is uh, on the CentOS side, if you are uh, a RHEL customer today or you're, you're planning on using RHEL in the future, and you'd like to know what the next minor version looks like, go look at CentOS Stream and get involved with us. Um, you're more than welcome to run it through your CI systems and run your workloads through it. And that means that when uh, a, the next RHEL release comes, you can be ready on day one to, uh, to uh, build your applications on top of it. And you can also make sure that uh, you know, we don't accidentally introduce some sort of, uh, of issue or other, uh, other unsuspecting uh, problem your way, because you can come and work with the engineers uh, to let us know ahead of time. Okay, well, uh, Mike, Daryl, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, very clear messaging from both of you there today. Uh, so uh, thanks to Daryl and Mike, and we look forward to further industry updates from Red Hat in the very near future. Thanks very much for watching.